All right, welcome back. Thank you for joining us today. We are gonna make 100 serving boards. Why, why, why did I do that? Today, we're gonna do it. Let's go. First step is cut down all of our stock into, we bought a bunch of boards the other day. Uh, we got five boards of walnut, five boards of cherry, five boards of ash, and then we got some paduk for accent. serving boards. It's just a nice round arbitrary number that will teach us how to <laughs> kind of an outrageous number. make things at a production scale. Anyway, we're gonna start out easy with some serving boards. They can't be that complicated. All right, so it's been a couple days since you last saw anything with these serving boards. Um, we were starting to cut the thumb slot hole handle sort of thing so you can hold the board and serve cheese and things. But the blade, that's the tightest curve I could get with that big thick blade. And I didn't buy a skinnier blade because I didn't think I'd be using it because I said, if you remember a couple videos ago, I said, because essentially what we need is a resaw machine. But then the first project we used the bandsaw on, we need to cut really tight curves. So went to Rockler, bought the wrong size bandsaw blade. And uh, anyway, they didn't have any in the store that I needed. So I had to order one. So that's what should be showing up today. That was a couple days ago. So now, after thinking about it for a little while, what I want to do is some of those boards are skinny and I want to add a different color strip into the board. So what I'm going to do today is joint some of those boards so I can rip them on the table saw to get really nice uh, straight lines so that I can glue up different colored stripes through the boards. I picked up this uh, Rockler router table fence. I don't know, feels like it's kind of expensive for just a piece of extruded aluminum and MDF, but whatever. It has these two pieces of MDF that slide and normally that's to control the gap between the bit. What you can do with it is in between where it meets the aluminum, you can put washers on these bolts and have one of the fences slightly further forward than this one. And what that means is that I can use the router as a joiner. I'd really like to buy a joiner, but the machine that I want to buy, <laughs> we got to make some room on the credit card first. We got to make a couple sales before we can do that. That way I can wait to buy the machine that I really want and I don't have to buy the same machine two or three times. A lot of people get confused. I know I always say worry about the money coming in, don't worry about the money coming out, but that doesn't mean just blow your cash. I, I'm not saying go blow a bunch of money. I'm saying if you need the tool, don't hesitate, just buy it and then move on with your life. Make a few more sales and you won't even think about the tool. I mean, how many times have you bought a tool that you saved up for and you just never worry about the tool's price ever again because of how valuable the tool is? That's what I'm getting at. I'm not saying blow all your money. If you need to spend the money, spend the money. Don't hold on to it. Don't be greedy. Let that money go and play somewhere else. Let somebody else enjoy that money while you enjoy the tool, get some work done and get money from somewhere else. Thank you. 
also, it's freezing in Houston today. Like, all, it's well, a relative okay. term. It is relative term. But so it was like around 40 degrees. And then I wake up. I'm like, oh, it's a little chilly, whatever. And then he goes, we might need to fill the propane tank to use the heater in the garage today. And I said, just for a couple minutes, not for like two we hours. We just moved here from North Dakota. Like Houston has has made you weak. Yeah, but there's a difference. No, there's a difference between running the <laughs> propane heater for five minutes versus two hours, just so I your mean, hand yeah, doesn't stick to the like, table saw. The first really cold, well, really cold day we get here, and already we should turn on the heater. Got to stay strong. Can't forget our kind of roots. Yeah, Bruce is doing really good with the uh, freaking birds. Anyway, Bruce is doing a lot better with the uh, scooter. He does just about like he did with the uh, the bicycle. He just runs right beside you. Not a problem in the world. Uh, Jenny's gone right now. She's gone doing some training for our new jobs. I didn't get hired soon enough. So just enjoying a nice fall afternoon in Houston all by myself. Well, I got Bruce. So you might be asking yourself, why in the world are they building 100 serving boards? And right now, honestly, I'm kind of asking myself the same question. Uh, it's a lot of tedious work, but I think it'll be, I think it'll pay off when we're finished, pun intended. So why 100? So 100 serving boards. Well, the first reason we're doing it is for realtors. Jen and I have talked a lot about this. We think that our best connection point to this community and finding the customers that we want are realtors. We want high middle class or upper class people who are not going to nickel and dime you for the price of your furniture that just want a high end product, are willing to pay for it and are going to be repeat customers. So that's kind of our target audience with our business. Now, what does a realtor need with a hundred serving boards? A realtor usually supplies, if you've never bought a house, hopefully if you had a decent realtor, they give you some sort of a closing gift. It's a small little thank you for using the realtor. They're, I mean, you know, they're professional networkers. They got to foster their relationships too. So as a thank you for them making a big fat check on buying you, buying your house, they usually give a small, uh, housewarming gift around the area of $50 or so. And that's exactly what we want to produce. We want to go to these realtors, make an introduction, establish a relationship with them and supply them with serving boards that they can give away as closing gifts. And once we establish good relationships with those realtors, we can then introduce ourselves to the people that bought the house. They're going to see our logo and our branding and everything else on the serving board. And hopefully we're not expecting it, but hopefully they'll reach out and maybe want us to build them some furniture. So bottom line, if we get plugged in, with some high-end realtors and we become their supplier for custom woodworking to their clients, that's how we're gonna meet more people and we're gonna find our Ferris wheel of clients that we really wanna produce for. Also, we're looking for business mentors, people that have built 40, 50, 60 million dollar companies and that's who we wanna surround ourselves with. So if we can find people that we work with, it's gonna be much easier to flex those relationships into mentorships later on. Now, why are we making 100 all at once? We just got the shop set up. We're, we're starting to build furniture for our house. Why in the world are you are you doing 100? Well, there's a couple of reasons. We wanna find out what's not set up right. What are we missing? Are there any tools? Are there any little jigs? Is there something that we need if we do a large batch of something is there something that we need? And we've already identified that our clamping strategy is terrible. We only have a couple pipe clamps. They're not really the right size. They, you know, we, we don't really want to build calls to keep them all level and separate. Um, we had to build the, the joiner on the router 
So there's a lot of things that we've identified just with these hundred serving boards that we need in the shop. Now they're not necessary to getting it done, but if we're hiring an employee and we're paying them by the hour, it's gonna to start to add up really fast. If they're constantly having to adjust the joiner that we have on the router versus just using a setup joiner full time. So it's a band-aid fix for now, but we're identifying things and trying to prioritize them in, in a logical order that makes sense for our business to purchase. So we're finding production flaws. The second thing is we wanna have them ready to go. Uh, the idea is that Jenny or I will walk into uh, you know, a realtor's office after we schedule a meeting and just say, hey, there's a couple samples of the boards. We take them in orders of 25 so that they're set for the rest of the year. We just wanna have them ready to go. That way, if somebody wants to write us a check for a few grand, we can sell them 100 serving boards that day and deliver them and be done with it and move on to the next build. So we don't want to have to say, oh yeah, we'll have your closing gifts in you know, a couple weeks and then they change their mind and then they sit on it for a while. That's, that's not how we want to get started in the community. We want to be ready to go at a moment's notice. We also want to sell in batches of 25. I don't want to make a new serving board every time a realtor closes on a new home. I know that that's how a lot of people do it, but this is not a hobby for us, this is a business. So whatever we do, we need to be able to do at scale. It also helps us lower our overhead. I wanna have our system down so pat that whenever we hire employees, all we have to do is pull out the 100 serving board checklist, give that to the employees and say, there you go, knock them out. We have all of our systems in place. There's no question on what needs to be done. There's no question about the next step. We have templates if we need to, you know, for routing out the, the handholds and stuff like that for the serving boards. Everything is ready to go while still allowing the employee to have a little bit of creative freedom on how each board gets done. So finding that balance is tough, but that's, that's why we're making 100 before we even get started. So we wanna sell in batches of 25 and we wanna have a bunch ready to go. Now this brings us to our next part, which is the price. Our general pricing structure that we normally use, which is materials, plus labor, plus 40%. That's our normal pricing structure that we use. It's great, but it kind of falls apart once you start doing things at scale. So that's still a perfect formula. We're gonna use this formula for a long, long time. But when you're batching things out, you need to sort of understand what the market price is. You need to start with your price in mind first. That's the easiest way to do it, and then work backwards from there. So we know that the realtors are usually only gonna spend around $50, we're just gonna stick to the $50 closing gift, see if we can come in there. And who knows, maybe maybe we build something bigger and better in the future, but for right now, we're just gonna start with the average cost of $50. So if I know that I'm gonna sell these for around $50 each, that's gonna be $5,000 that we make just on this set of 100 serving boards. I don't know yet, I'm not done with them, but I am imagining that it's not gonna take me a whole lot of time. I'm guessing maybe, going to my head right now, maybe 30 hours to, to do all these boards. So 30 hours times our labor rate of $30 an hour is gonna be $900 in labor. We're gonna have around 700 in material costs. So we're into these for $1,600. And then you subtract that from the five grand we have up here and then looking at a profit of around $3,400. So I think $50 for a nice serving board is gonna be no problem at all for the sale as far as perceived value is concerned. Because think of it from the realtor's perspective, they're getting a custom, handmade, unique piece from a local woodworker. What says welcome to the neighborhood like something built locally? We've got a pretty good value proposition for the realtor to spend you know, $47, $55 or so per board. And at a profit of $3,400 for you know half a week's worth in the shop, I'd say that's pretty good. Now again, we may not get this much for the boards and that's okay. We get a lot of benefit out of making these boards ourselves. And I'm not saying that that should offset the cost, but I'm saying if worst case scenario, if we have to get rid of them for a lower price, that's at least a silver lining. So I'm not too worried about these. It's just a hundred of them. I know we can get rid of them and make our money back. I mean, for $1,600, that's for labor and materials. If that's our worst case scenario, I know I can get rid of these hundred boards for $16 a piece. I know I can get that. That is all for this one. I'm gonna have to split this into two videos. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the second video. Yeah, we'll catch back up once we get the second video done. And these serving boards will be finished and pretty and beautiful and I can't wait to finish these. But I've got a mountain of sanding to do between now and then. So, thank you very much. 
If you're interested, if you're just the weekend woodworker and you just want to sell some of your stuff, we have courses. It's the first link in the description and we kind of go through our whole sales process and how to find good customers and how to market yourself and how to price your work and all that sort of stuff. So don't be intimidated by all this if you don't want to scale and you don't want to grow just as fast. If you just kind of want to get your feet wet with sales, um, we can definitely show you how to do that.